Okay, today I want to talk about dead batteries and how you can check them to make sure they're dead. And a few other things, how to use the volt ohm meter to check them. It's really simple. I've got all my dead batteries here that I save up and take to the hazardous waste facility. They take them for free. And there's other places you can take them. Some of the stores take them. Anyway, here's a simple 9 volt battery. And I don't worry too much about the polarity. I just don't care if it's a negative or a positive. It's going to give you the reading. That one's saying 7.4 volts. That's dead. That's a 9 volt battery. So I know it's time to toss. I use a lot of these in smoke detectors and I'm not gonna put a rechargeable battery in a rental unit smoke detector so I'm stuck buying the alkaline batteries. Can get them online real cheap um, a lot cheaper even than Costco so if you hunt around if you have apartments it's a good way to go. You can check the button batteries they're a little trickier to check but guess what the top side is the positive and the back side is the negative. So all you got to do, you can put it down on the table and just kind of push down with your finger on the negative. And that one's reading 2.9 to 3 volts. This one's basically dead. A new one's going to read 3.2 volts typically. This one's no good, so I know. And that's going with my dead batteries. Also on the voltmeter, if you look here, how do you know what's DC? Batteries are DC and what's AC? AC has the squiggly line because that's like a sine wave for alternating current. So on this meter you see a 200 and a 600. For uh, If you were testing a 240 volt circuit you'd put it on 600 because 200 would be too low. And if you were testing a standard 120 household, you, you could put it on 200 or 600, wouldn't make any difference. For batteries, well I had it on 200, that's more, way more than enough. 2 volts wouldn't have been enough for the 9 volt battery, so I would have been at the 20. Okay, so all these batteries are dead. I have some specialized ones here. There's a battery, probably a NICAD inside this little trimmer. I couldn't figure out how to open it and it won't take a charge, so guess what? It's going to the hazardous waste facility. I am not throwing it in the garbage because it's got lead in it, okay? And whatever else. So we do not want this stuff going to the landfill. This here came out of a power supply for a computer, computer plug, dead battery. I ordered a new one so that I saved, I salvaged the casing of the power supply but the battery will not take a charge. Okay, these things fail and you can just order them online. So that's also lead acid going to the toxic waste facility. Now if you sum your batteries, your car batteries, you can get paid either where you buy the new battery, they'll give you five or nine bucks, or you can take them to Schnitzer's, the recycler, and they'll pay you by weight, believe it or not, for your car batteries. I'm not sure it's really worth the trouble since they'll They'll give you the refund on your dead car batteries, but schnitzers might pay for this per pound. So I might keep that with my recyclables that are worth money. But I don't think schnitzers pays for this, these types of batteries. So, okay, now I also wanted to show you today how to test a light bulb because while you're going to the hazardous waste facility, you also want to take these because these have mercury in them and so you do not want to throw these in the garbage either. These need to go to the hazardous waste facility. Okay, So I take them, keep them with my ba dead batteries and take them all at the same time. Now these guys are a little bit hard to test with the voltmeter. I haven't figured it out yet so with an incandescent you can do an ohm meter test and you rotate over to the ohms which is the omega symbol and you'd simply put one lead on the swirl and one on the button and this 
incandescent bulb is showing a zero, which means there is continuity through the filament, which means this bulb is good. You don't believe me? Let's put it in the lamp and check it. It's good. So the problem with the fluorescence is I have a dead one and I have a live one that I know is good. And if you check it with the ohmmeter, well, uh, I get some weird things going on. I'm not getting, basically it's saying no continuity. But, if I check the good one, I get the same thing. No, con no continuity. But when I put this in my light, bingo, it's good. So there's probably, there's electronics inside this part of the light bulb, ballast and so forth, and for that reason, I have not yet found a way to test these with the ohm meter. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. These are great. Volt ohm meter. You can pick up this little guy at Harbor Freight for around three dollars. Sometimes they give them away free. It's perfectly good. Nothing wrong with it. Same thing. You got DC volts over here. AC volts here. And your ohm meter is right in this section. Okay. So again, this is a great tool. Everybody should have one of these. Very easy to use. And uh, highly recommend you get one of these. Then you know for sure that your batteries are dead before you take them to the hazardous waste facility. All right, that's it for today. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later. Bye.